Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lana and today we are talking about how to save money at Costco. Perhaps you are like me and you feel like every time you go to Costco you spend at least $300 and you're like where did all the money go? What did I even get? I'm so confused. This video is for you. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I make videos simplifying money and home. If that is the content you need in your life, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any uploads. My first tip for saving money at Costco is to look into the membership options. So the basic membership option right now costs $60 a year and that gets you in the door and you can buy all the things at Costco. You might consider trying out an executive membership. So the executive membership costs $120 a year, but you get Costco cash back on that. And you can use that Costco cash back to pay for your membership. So I don't exactly know all the percentages and all the details of how this all works. Every year Costco gives us a check based off a percentage of the money that we spent at Costco and we use that money to renew our membership. So this kind of depends how much money you think you're going to spend at Costco, even if you don't get the whole membership for free, if you don't get $120 back or more. Don't be discouraged because you still might be getting your membership for cheaper than if you just bought the cheaper $60 membership. So for us last year, I guess we failed to spend enough money at Costco, even though I kind of see that as a win and we only got $105 back from our executive membership. But that means that we got our Costco membership for $15 because you can't get cash back with the $60 membership. If you spend enough money at Costco, having the executive membership can definitely be worth it if you just turn around and spend it on your membership because it can make your membership free or close to free. They also have a city credit card option that has some pretty cool cashback benefits and um, rewards, but know yourself if you think that having that credit card will cause you to spend more money than you normally would otherwise, or you have trouble paying off your credit card every single month, that's probably not a safe option for you. But if you can be responsible with that, that can also be a great perk of Costco. Okay, the next thing to watch out for, is the item you're buying really cheaper? Is it really actually cheaper? So sometimes at Costco, things are in big packages, so you just assume that you are paying less than you would at your local grocery store, but that is not always true. Be comparing the price per unit, the price per ounce, the price per pound, or whatever it is to see if you're actually getting a better deal. Because Costco often has higher quality items than the supermarket, so it's big, and then it's also higher quality, but that means the price per pound could actually end up being more than what you would pay at your local supermarket, but you don't realize because you're like, it's Costco, it has to be cheaper. But that is not necessarily true. And I think this can definitely be true for meat. You look at the huge package and you're like, well, it must be a deal. But you need to really look at the price per pound. Maybe they source their meat differently than the supermarket and maybe you will have to pay for that difference. So don't just assume because it's at Costco or it's in a big package that it is actually cheaper. So some things are cheaper at the supermarket and some things are cheaper at Costco. And some things are a lot cheaper at Costco, like the Cheerios. Okay, my next tip is that if you don't actually use all of the item, then it's not actually cheaper. So we kept getting these big bags of chips because my son and husband love to have nachos, but we would never actually finish the entire bag and the bottom of the bag would get stale because the bag was too big. This means you're not actually saving money and you're wasting food when you're doing that. So if you are buying an item that you're not actually going to consume all of it, then it is not worth it to buy at Costco. Think twice before buying items that are not shelf stable at Costco and think about whether or not you can actually consume them before they go bad. So we buy huge things of Cheerios, but they have two different bags. So they're each sealed separately. So it doesn't matter how long it takes us to get to the second bag, 
because the second bag is not going bad while it's just sitting there in the pantry. This Costco trap I fall into all the time is overbuying. So if you overbuy, I feel like it can make you start to overuse. So if you have so much meat in your freezer and you believe that you are never going to run out of meat and you don't need to ration it at all or be clever about how you're using it or think strategically about that, then uh, you could use more than you need and thus spend more money. So for us, we try to count how many days it's gonna be before we go back to Costco and then buy that amount of servings of meat. This is so we have enough meat, but we don't have extras. So we know in the back of our head, well, it's gonna be enough to get to the next Costco trip, but it's not gonna be so much we can eat twice as much meat. Because if we eat twice as much meat, it will cost us twice as much to eat. So we try to only go back to Costco when our stores are depleted and only buy as much as we're going to use. This might also go for those oversized bags of chips. Perhaps it is more cost effective to buy that many chips, but you might want to be thinking about whether or not you actually want to consume that many chips. Okay, my next tip is to go to Costco less often. So in my grocery store video, I also talk about this, that it seems like every time you go to the store or every time you go to Costco, you end up spending more money than you expected. But if you limit the number of times that you go to the store, you can save money. This also forces you to make a better list. So I know that we only go to Costco once a month I am very careful with that list and making sure that it has everything that we need from Costco on it and nothing else. I know that when we're in Costco and we see something fun, we might want to buy that and that will cost us extra money. So every time we step inside that store, we are at danger for blowing the budget. So if we just don't go as often, we can avoid that trap. Okay, my last tip is to avoid those fun extras. So I feel like everything at Costco is about $10, <laughs> except for the meat. <laughs> and they have so many fun things. And it's like, well, $10 isn't that much. We could get that, that could be fun. So, but $10 really starts to add up. So definitely watching those non-list items that jump into your cart and look fun. So if you need it, of course, you probably should buy it but this applies to clothes and books. You know, the clothes are really cheap. It's like, oh, it's only $10. But if you don't really need it, then you are just overspending on your budget. When we were at Costco the other day, we almost bought this brownie mix, which would have been fun, but all those little $10 increments really start to add up. And then you look confused at the cashier when they tell you you owe them $400. And remember, Costco designed it this way so that you would spend more money because that's their goal. So you have to thwart their goal with your plans. This is also the reason that they shift where they put the merchandise. So the coconut milk is not always in the same spot. And this forces you to go down every single row every single time and see all the cool stuff that they have and be tempted by it. So stick to your list and know what you actually need and what your plan is to buy at Costco. If this was helpful, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, how do you save money at Costco, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any uploads. Thanks for watching, bye for now.